Hey everybody, my name is Billy and I'm the CEO of HV Auto and today we're going to do a buyer's guide on almost my favorite Porsche. This is the 991.1 GT3 RS and it's in my favorite color. I'm sure you can guess that, orange. We're going to do a walk through the car. We're going to some basic specs. We're going to talk about the engine because maybe you don't know or maybe you do know there are some issues with these engines that were inherited from the 991 GT3. And there's also a couple other things we're gonna talk about, but today we're gonna to cover it all. Maintenance, you name it, this video's gonna have it. So the MSRP on this car originally is 176, and with the options, you can obviously work your way up well into the mid 200s. So obviously the MA176 four liter flat six engine, which is basically the same engine with some updates that came in the 991.1 GT3. And we'll go over some of those caveats with this engine as well as we work through the video. It is 500 horsepower, it does have 339 foot-pounds of torque. So the red line in this engine is 8800 RPMs, but in the press release, before the car was officially released, Porsche mentioned something around 9000, some of the footage you could see. They actually reduced it because of some of the caveats with this engine, which we'll, we'll talk about. And what's kind of interesting is every gear you shift up, they reduced the RPMs by 50 RPMs. And again, that kind of ties back into the 991 engine and some of the issues it had, which we'll discuss here in this video. Another kind of cool features about the car is it's got the carbon um, hood, magnesium roof, carbon wing, uh, the titanium exhaust. A, a, quite a bit of reduction in weight over the 991 GT3. It also has 20 inch wheels in the front, 21 inch in the rear, 410 millimeter size front brake, 390 in the rear. Obviously the PCCB is an upgrade that a lot of people prefer which this car features but you can also go with the steel brakes as well if you prefer those. And it does zero to 100 in 7.1 seconds so it's pretty quick. Some of the benefits of the car obviously are the three-way adjustable sway bars the lower control arms are adjustable. The differential is 100% adjustable, and obviously PSM takes kind of care of that aspect of the car. And a unique feature that you won't see in America is the Club Sport package. And in the Club Sport package, you obviously get the factory cage, you get the 19 spider seats, you get the factory kill switch, you get the fire extinguisher, and there's no charge for it, which is crazy. Uh, but due to regulations in America, you can't get the Club Sport package where the cage comes in the car. You can get the same roll cage though that they have in Europe, but you'd have to have your dealership install it after you purchase it or, you know, local Porsche specialist. So just a quick walk through the interior of this car. It's not much different than a standard 911. In fact, uh, you probably won't notice anything different unless you're really looking hard. Obviously this car does have DV8 stitching, which is nice in the full leather dash. It's got the carbon package, it's got PDK only. You can't get a manual. It's got white face gauges. There are some giveaways. Obviously right here in the instrument cluster, it says gt 3 with the logo and a nice little animation of the wing. It says GT Thrust right here. It clearly says right here, illuminated with carbon. And, and a lot of the modern GT cars, there is this, which is an indication you're in a GT car. So we'll just walk over some standard features and we'll just kind of start from the door panel, and work our way in. So obviously you have a little bit of storage room, just like a standard 911. Nothing really different, but you got some extra space. We do have the carbon here, the DV8 stitching. And then the standard light switch here. And of course, the key switch is always on the left side and it makes it quicker for you to start the car if you're trying to race in Le Mans. We have the shifters here for the PDK, your turn signals for your lights, cruise control here, uh, this switch over here kind of just controls your instrument cluster switches. And then you have the wiper switch right here as well. We have obviously the, the center console here, which is kind of where Porsche focuses on all of the functions of the car. So this car does have PDK Sport. And uh, I'll show you something really cool about this feature in just a moment. It does have the PASM. Obviously you got stability control and traction control. You have pit speed and this function basically allows you to set a max speed going into the pits. You know, if you're playing on race your GT3 or doing some type of fun track day. You have the front lift option in this car and the Porsche Sport exhaust, your hazard lights, your lock button, and then all your HVAC controls and then your standard PCM here and then right here just a nice storage compartment a little cigarette lighter or phone charger if you will of course you've got your cup holders which is pretty much standard and then obviously you have your storage compartment here in the glove box this car obviously has a fire extinguisher and then obviously you've got sun visors here and mirrors 
home link for your garage door, your interior lights. This car doesn't have the sensor in the mirror. And then fortunately, if you're planning on carrying anyone along with you, you're probably not gonna do that unless they don't wanna wear a seat belt, but you do have some storage space and a nice little GT RS embroidery here on the center section here, if you will. Um, but that pretty much completes the interior uh, review of this car. And then I would like to show you some unique features with the PDK Sport transmission. So one of the cool features with the PDK Sport and the GT cars is it allows you to do a clutch kick. So we're gonna start the car up. And obviously, you know, we're in park right here, as you can see on the dash, but then we're gonna drive for the car not to freak out. But now I'm gonna pull both of these. Now, if you look at the instrument cluster, you see all the ones flashing? We're technically in neutral right now. So if I wanted to, I could rev up the car, let go of the paddle shifters, and it's like controlling the clutch. You'll allow the wheels to spin if you want to do a clutch kick or any of those fun things. You can't do that in the standard PDK, but in the sport PDK that comes with the GT cars, you can do it, which is a really cool feature. Now, if you're in a regular Porsche, you can tap the shifter paddles and put the car in neutral, but you can't do the clutch kick like you can with this one. Unique feature of this PDK is, can you hear it? That's the clutch. It's a lot louder and it rattles like a, a you know original Metzger engine does. Uh, it's the dual clutch chatter that you would hear in a standard six-speed Metzger car, but now you go with the PDK. Sounds great if you ask me. The last thing we'll cover before we move to the outside tour of the vehicle is the seats. Now, these are the 19 Spider seats, and uh, I love these seats. They look phenomenal, and they actually have a, a, a large and small version, which these appear to be the, the large version. They're much more comfortable, but they don't adjust. If you look right here, there is, there's no adjustment, and it's a fully carbon fiber seat. I think in this car, you know, like in our last one, we talked about the GT4. You know, we talked about how the comfort seats were a lot better if you weren't playing a track the car or if you just wanted the comfort and the resale value wasn't quite as you know affected dramatically in like a gt4 in this car though i think it does matter because this car yes you can get the comfort seats but i do think it's going to affect resale value simply because this car is like a race car so when you're buying this car you don't want to see the comfort seats in it you want to see the 19 spider lightweight carbon bucket seats so um it does feel a little bit better in this car and there's a little bit more comfort, but I would recommend getting these seats in this particular car, unlike the GT4 where you can kind of go either way and you're probably fine with resale value. Well, the first thing you'll notice when you pop the hood is obviously all this carbon like we discussed in the first part of the video. So this is one of my favorite parts and it's very light and one of the best aspects of the car. Another thing too is if you look right here, this is a sticker. This is not an emblem, that's to save weight. Here's your little tool compartment. Now, what you won't notice is a locking lug here, and there's a reason why. You have a much better device than the standard safety lock. You obviously have a tow hook and the random tools they give you here in the tool kit. And then, obviously, the tire gel, which I don't think you'd probably ever use this in this car, but it's here. It's there for you if you really want to try it out. Maybe you're forced to. And then we kind of went over this in the GT4. It's very similar. There's not much difference here, but there is one thing different about this car than a standard 911 or even standard GT car in most cases. There's no hook, that's for one, because it saves weight. They didn't want to add that in there. Now we're gonna have to hold this up, but if you come over here, there is a tool to remove your center lock. You can see that the device is designed for a special wrench that can handle the force of removing the center lock. And then of course you have your brake fluid reservoir, your tire pump, your battery, cabin filter, and wiper fluid. But hopefully you're never driving in the rain, don't need the wiper fluid. So now we're gonna go to the best part of every car, or you would think. So here is the engine compartment. Not much to see, right? That's by design. Porsche doesn't want you touching it. They only want you near this thing. So the only thing they give you access to is a couple things, barely. Your coolant and your engine oil. If you wanna get inside this thing, um, your best bet is to ask your Porsche mechanic to take it apart and show you it or do some YouTube videos. So there's not much to see here. I will say this is obviously carbon. This is a carbon panel here, um, but there's not much to see here. Kind of what you see is what you get in the rear engine portion. So some of the common problems with the GT3 RS that we're gonna cover today are mainly engine related. And you know, a lot of the things can be prevented but we wanna give you the full breakdown so you understand what you're walking into. For the most part, all of these cars have the latest re revision of the G engine, which is the same engine, the 991 GT3. It's based off that engine. This is not a Metzger engine. It's based off the latest 991 GT3 engine. But when you get into the RS, you've got the most dated version. And then there was another change halfway through the production line. They had another revision 
to the engine in the RS that most people don't know about. They did improve some things. So you do still see some issues with camshaft tappet lifters in the camshaft itself. And a lot of this can be prevented in this engine, speaking about the RS car, by running a good quality oil and having oil tests done. The issue you're, we're seeing with these, or have seen, is the oil does not have the additives in it that will protect the camshaft and lifters from premature wear. So in order to fix that, what we recommend is run Motul 300V engine oil. And by running that, it has extra zinc additives and ZDPP, which prevent the camshafts and lifters from eating themselves up. And it allows the car to last quite a bit longer and protect your very expensive tt 3 engine. If you have a car that was prior to the mid revision, the cams are a little bit different. So when you get an RS, it does have the lifters and tappets updated from the latest TT3 revision. And then when you get the halfway through update to these engines, you have the DLC diamond light coated camshafts on these engines. At that point, they're essentially pretty much bulletproof. But we still would recommend in any of these cars running a high quality oil, doing a 5,000 mile interval on the oil changes, and you shouldn't have any problems with these engines. They're pretty robust if you just address the oiling problem. So another couple small things, and it's not a hugely documented issue, and it's not commonly discussed, is we have seen some issues with the PDK cooler. Like I said, not a ton, just a few. Uh, we have seen some issues with the uh, tensioner on the drive belt. Again, not a major issue. And we have seen some issues with center locks if the car is tracked frequently and not serviced correctly, which will go over the maintenance intervals. And now I'd like to just cover kind of what maintenance looks like on one of these cars, which is fairly simple for the magnitude of the car. It is you would think it'd be a lot more complex, but it's really not. On the maintenance intervals, based on Porsche's recommendation, every 12,000 miles or 12 months, they recommend the engine oil, engine oil filter, and air filters be replaced. We recommend every 5,000 miles, and we also recommend the Motul 300V because of what we discussed previously with additive. At 20,000 miles or two years, brake flush is recommended, cabin air filters are recommended, and spark plugs by Porsche. Generally, we agree with that. We have done spark plug intervals generally at four years or you know 48,000 miles, 40,000 mile range. In this particular case, this car, I think we can agree on the two years, 20,000 miles makes sense. For the PDK, Porsche recommends every 48,000 miles or 48 months. We do, you know, every four years or 40,000 miles on the PDK clutch fluid. And on the differential, Porsche recommends every 96,000 miles or 12 years, where we still stick with the same interval we use on the clutch fluid at 40,000 miles or four years. With the center locks, Porsche recommends at 4,200 miles to replace the front wheel bearings of track miles and at 8,400 miles in the rear, the rear wheel bearings. And then at 16,800 miles of track miles, they recommend the same thing over again. Bearings in the front, bearings in the rear, and that's pretty much the maintenance intervals on the center locks. And that covers pretty much all the maintenance for the GT thrust other than the basic things like coolant flush at every 30,000 miles or three years, you know, checking the alignment specs every year, drive belt should be every six years or 60,000 miles, and just a good inspection of the vehicle to obviously make sure there's no uh, premature wear or anything to fail but for the most part it's an extremely robust car and it doesn't require a lot of maintenance it's just a strong car so as far as the market insights on the car the average market price is 215,000 the average odometer we're seeing is about 10,000 and we're seeing about 80 to 95 days for all the cars sell on the market with about 50 cars listed online when you buy one of these cars most people that are in a position to buy a car like this are thinking about what is my exit strategy and you know obviously timing of the purchase color options and things like that so i'll give some of my recommendations i would recommend the front lift on the car i would recommend the 19 spider seat i would recommend pccb but it's not a requirement it's just something I would recommend. A Sport Chrono is obviously a nice option to have. Don't have to have it in an extended fuel tank. And outside of that, I love lava orange, obviously, but white's a good color as well. Low production colors that people um, don't see as often, but it's hard to go wrong with lava orange. To conclude the video, basically the pros of this car is obviously look at it. It looks phenomenal. If you're looking for a sports car look with the Porsche reliability, this is the answer. Any GT RS type car is gonna get you there. So the looks are incredible on this car. It's very aggressive. It's very reliable. You're not gonna you know, be at the dealership every six months if you bought a Ferrari that you let sit in the garage all the time. You can let this car sit or you can drive and it's gonna perform. The resale value is very good on these cars because it's obviously a very low production car. Uh, maintenance costs are significantly lower. So there's a lot of pros to this car if you're looking for a 
sports exotic Porsche. Uh, some of the cons are obviously if you don't like the um, non-adjustable seats, these are a little bit uncomfortable and challenging. Obviously the PDK does make a good bit of noise. Overall, I think this is one of the best Porsches you can buy. I am a little biased towards some of the older generations, but if you're looking at the newer generation cars, this is a great option for you to consider and hopefully this video provides you some good insight on the car and an understanding of what to look for and how the, the car operates and performs. And I think if you're looking for a car to hold on to, this is a great choice. Well, thank you for watching the video. I hope you got a ton of value from it. And if you have any feedback, let us know because what we wanna do is make awesome content for other Porsche lovers like ourselves that can give you some value and help you make the right decision when you're buying your next Porsche. So comment below, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.